Pinyin is a romanized form of Chinese developed by Chinese linguists during the 1950s to come up with a consistent phonetic representation of the sounds of spoken Chinese. It was not made for the convenience of American students learning the language, so it has some unusual features, but it doesn't take a long time to learn it. Pinyin represents the sounds of Chinese syllables. There are three elements to a Chinese syllable, a tone, the initial sound, and the final sound. By the way, I just want to point out that Chinese is much more reduced than English. English speakers have a much richer repertoire of sounds than Chinese speakers do. So it doesn't take such a long time to learn it. In one estimate, there are about 16,000 different syllables possible in English, or actually used in English. In Chinese, there are only 400. With the inclusion of tones, that makes it 1,600, which is about one-tenth of the number of syllables in English. Chinese is a tonal language. Every language has intonation, so in English you can actually hear the rising and falling of my voice in pitch as I use sentences, and everybody does that all the time. Japanese is the same way as sentence-based intonation. Uh, tonal language like Chinese, the tone becomes fixed to a particular word, and that tone is associated with that word in each case. There are four tones in Chinese, not including the neutral tone. The first tone is high and level, a little bit longer at the top of your speaking voice. The second tone rises from the middle upwards, like asking a question. The third tone drops down to the lowest area of your speaking voice. And the fourth tone goes from the top to the bottom very quickly. So the first tone is like an opera singer. It's unusual in English, so it sounds funny to use it. It's high and level. Ma like you're singing, ma. <clears throat> the second tone is almost exactly like asking a question in English, like where is mom? Ma, ma, rising from about mid-tone upwards, ma. The third tone, sometimes when it's independent, it'll go down and back up, but usually it just goes down low. It's like a diesel engine when it's idling, ma, 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 and you just take one of those syllables, ma, or it's like Louis Armstrong when he sings, it gets really gravelly and low, ma, ma, that's the third tone. Fourth tone is like getting kicked in the stomach. It's like a kick, it goes all the way up, all the way down very fast, ma, ma. It tends to be used for verbs because of that emphasis. The neutral tone always follows another tone, and the tone intonation of the neutral tone depends on what follows it. It kind of backs, it bounces back to the middle level a little bit above, a little bit below. So like if you're looking for mama, mama, mama. In that case, it drops below the middle level. So here are the tone marks for the tones. The first tone, high level, ma, Second tone, rising from middle level, ma. Third tone, dropping low, sometimes rising, ma. And fourth tone, high to low, very fast, ma. And the neutral tone, there's no mark. The important thing to remember about tones for an English speaker learning Chinese is that it's not natural in English. You have to exaggerate the tones when you're practice, practicing them. You have to exaggerate them more than a native speaker that you hear uses them. And then you have to constantly practice and practice and rehearse them. The place where it becomes more critical is when you start to get fluent in Chinese. You want to speak more rapidly and more smoothly. And that's the time when you really have to start doubling down on the tones and practicing them, exaggerating, do little things to help you remember the tones as you're speaking because it's just always and forever not natural to you. So there are three parts of the syllable in Chinese, the tone, the initial sound, and the final sound. So we're going to talk about the vowels that are final sounds right now. We'll just talk about the simple finals, the compound finals, and others we'll leave to the textbook. So there are uh, these basic vowels in Chinese. So the letter A on its own is ah, the letter O is pronounced o, the letter E is pronounced uh, as in the, uh. The letter I is usually E, except in special cases explained in the textbook. 
the letter U is U. And then this last one with the umlaut over it is U. It appears in German, in French, and some southern dialects when people say thank you, which is made by doing E with your teeth and tongue and then forming a, forming a U with your lips. E, E. It's the same as this same vowel in German and French. And in some southern dialects, when people say thank you, it's the same sound. E. Okay, so of the three parts of the Chinese syllable, the tone, the initial sounds, the final sounds, now we're going to go to the initial consonant sounds. These particular ones are basically the same as in English. Bo, po, mo, po, de, te, na, la, g, k, h. The only difference here is that the H represents a more guttural h that you might expect from German. A deeper back in the throat, h. The others are fairly similar to English, but there might be a little bit of difference that you might pick up as you're learning Chinese. Now these next three sets of initial consonants are different from anything in English. The letters are pronounced different than the way we pronounce them in English. So this just takes a little bit of a walk through. These are pronounced towards the front of your mouth, right behind the teeth. G, chi, si. G, chi, si. There's a little more hissing in this Q sound than there would be like in cheese in English. There's more hissing here than there was in she sells seashells. She, a little more hiss than that. These are pronounced up against the hard palate. Um, the Z represents a sound that is like adds. He adds another fish to the soup. Z, Z. So it starts off with like a D form of the tongue and then moves into a buzz. Z. S is like rats, a T-S type sound. Starts with a T and then goes into the hiss. S, and then S is like a snake. S, just a hiss that you vo vocalize. Then these bottom four are the retroflex. Retroflex means back bending. So your tongue is supposed to bend back, but of course it can't do that. But it goes way up towards the top of the soft palate. And it winds up with your tongue making a buzzing sound along the roof of your mouth like this. It needs to feel like you've got a little honeybee between your tongue and the roof of your mouth. And if you do it right, it will tickle. It will feel funky. It seems unnatural and strange. And if you've got that, then you're doing it right. So the first one, way back and the tongue pressed against the soft palate. A little bit more of a slip through there. And then finally, this is just that sound itself. Just a buzz. So we'll try these all again. Z, c, s, j, ch, sh, u. You want to remember these are initial sounds. They always have to have something following them. There are only two final consonants in Chinese. They're called nasals, n and ng. The textbook will cover the compound finals, and you can use the textbook to cover that, but now you have all the basics that you need.